In a world moving to hybridization and crossovers, it seems like many manufacturers have neglected the regular car, whereas for many people and families, a midsize sedan is the perfect vehicle for them. And that leads us to this, the all-new Kia K5. All new vehicle and the name is new to us here in America, but it's been used in other markets. This directly replaces the Kia Optima. My experience with Kia has actually been interesting. A couple years ago, the Kia Stinger GT2 impressed me so much, I was considering getting rid of my Audi S4 and buying a Stinger as my daily driver. I didn't end up doing that because I moved up into an Audi R7, which is a whole different class of vehicle, but I really liked the Stinger GT2, which is even more impressive given the fact that another few years ago when I was in college, I remember going to a Kia dealership and test driving the cheapest vehicle they had. It was a Kia Soul, a very base Kia Soul like extremely base equipped level. I got the key and I went to unlock the car and I was like, oh, there's no buttons on the key. Oh, I actually have to insert the key and turn it. There were rolled down windows, which is even more impressive given the fact that a couple years later, the entire Kia lineup is so good now. One more fun fact about the K5 before we start talking about the powertrain. This is assembled in America down at Kia's plant in Georgia. So the engine in the K5, this is the GT line. We'll talk a bit more what GT line means in a moment, but this is a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes 180 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. Made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. Normally they are front wheel drive, but it can be equipped with all wheel drive, which this one has all wheel drive, which is good because you can see the cold and the snow and the ice all over the place in Chicago, Illinois right now. Fuel economy is rated at 26 city, 34 highway, 29 combined. You do lose a little bit of that because you are going to all-wheel drive. But if you're in snowy climates, I absolutely think that trade-off is worth it. So what is the GT line? It's taking the stylish, sporty, aggressive looks of the top-tier GT model and pairing it with the regular powertrain. So it's the middle of the lineup. The absolute top tier of the K5 GT has some even more impressive sporting credentials. It looks like Kia is directly targeting the BMW 3 Series. If you go to the K5 product page, they call out how the GT is quicker 0 to 60 than the BMW 330i, has a faster quarter mile trap speed, and all sorts of things. That is a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder two that makes 290 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. But with this one that we've been driving, you get the styling of the GT with the regular powertrain. I think exterior styling is one of the best parts of the new K5. It looks properly sporty and aggressive, and being a GT line actually brings a good amount of changes to this front fascia, this front end, and the rear end. If you take a look on the configurator, I was clicking between the base level K5 and a GT line or a GT, and you see this front fascia is much more aggressive. They changed a good amount from the regular ones and the GT appearance styling. So we still have that tiger nose front grille that's key design language there, but this grill mesh, this design, this texture here is called the shark skin. It's supposed to be inspired by the texture of a shark skin. My favorite part though are the DRLs. They make this zigzag kind of lightning shape. Kia calls it something like the heartbeat inspired shape, but they're orange slash amber. Anytime I'm passed by a newer Kia, it always catches my eye because the orange daytime running lights stand out from the rest of the white colored DRLs on almost every other vehicle. It comes together to make a very nice aggressive front end. Around back, same. It's got the kind of the light bar treatment, but it's different. It's separate into little dashes. You know, a lot of cars are starting to do that single continuous rear taillight, but again, Kia did it slightly differently here. If you look at the side profile, it might look a little bit like a sport back, um, like the Stinger, but it's not. No hatchback, conventional regular sedan with a normal opening trunk and four doors. Complaints I do have though, it has fake exhaust tips, like very fake exhaust tips. I understand it's the GT line, um, but the molding around the rear of the lower bumper, those are completely fake. So I don't love that, but as a GT line, a lot of stuff is blacked out. We've got black mirror housings there. There is one other kind of strange thing is that you see that silver trim that goes all around. I think that's the only piece that isn't blacked out because all the other front fascia pieces in the rear um, are all blacked out. Otherwise, I think this K5 is now definitely one of the best looking sedans in the segment. I used to be a little bit partial to the Ford Fusion. My family has owned a couple of them. It did kind of look like a baby Aston Martin, but Ford really hasn't done much to refresh that styling. Now it's completely gone. Um, so this K5, I think it looks properly aggressive. Also, 
look at the color. It's called Wolf Gray. I'm interpreting it as Kia's version of Nardo Gray, and obviously I have to like that. So with that, let's hop inside. We'll talk about the interior, what it's like to drive, and the value of the new K5 GT line. The inside of the new K5 GT line is a nice place. It's a nice blend of some technology, some luxury features, and some sporty parts to it. Some of the sporty parts, we have a flat bottom steering wheel, it's wrapped in leather, it's got a GT line badge there. No paddle shifters here, because um, again, it's just the regular powertrain. But the flat bottom steering wheel with heated leather is pretty nice. We've got these red contrast seats with the synthetic leather-like fueling material on them. They're pretty comfortable, they've got a GT line badge um, that's stitched onto the back of the seat there. It's pretty spacious, good visibility, um, decent quality plastics here too. We have a infotainment screen, the upgraded one, 10.25 inch touchscreen. The base one is 8 inches. There's some cool touches to it. Um, when you're on your radio, when you listen to the radio, selecting which channel you're on, the numbers are shown like a little Nixie tube, like the glowing numbers in the glass tube. It looks a really cool little effect there. But the most important thing is we have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I get in, I pretty much plug in my iPhone and I'm running Apple CarPlay. As equipped with the all-wheel drive package, you also get a lot of stuff bundled in that adds to the interior. It's the GT Line Premium Package and things like heated front seats, the mentioned heated steering wheel. We have 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with two-way lumbar support, which is nice for sure. And then a lot of driver assistant features too. We'll talk about that in a moment. One of the things I really like is the toggle switch. It's these, it's the small details that stand out to you. And I really like the toggle switch for your seat heaters. You pull it down and kind of like a little toggle trigger type of thing. And you select your seat heater level, which is very much welcome in sub freezing temperatures in the winter of Illinois. Decent power from that 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. My biggest takeaway is it actually is, it's very smooth, good power delivery with that eight speed automatic transmission and keeps it nice in the power band. And it made it feel quicker than I actually expected. Just pulling out from a turn and getting up to cruising speed, it keeps you right in the power band. And I think it's a really good smooth powertrain. Uh, does it lack a hybridized setup? Some of the other competitors do offer hybrid powertrains in this sedan and I do not think Kia has one for the K5 at the moment. Would the top tier K5 GT be even more fun? Yes, with 290 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque and a brand new eight-speed dual clutch transmission, I'm sure that would be very sharp. But for the GT line, just regular driving, it gets good fuel economy, it's pretty comfortable, and it has a nice interior. It does check a lot of these boxes. Some of the other boxes that are very good for the K5 is some standard and optional advanced driver assistant systems. Things like um, lane keep warning, blind spot warning, adaptive cruise control, front collision, uh, avoidance warning, all of these systems add up to be a pretty comprehensive suite. We even have this highway driving assistance, and from what I take, you press the steering wheel button on the steering wheel, your cruise control, you set your distance. On a freeway, it really does help you go through the curves, keep the vehicle centered. I hate the early uh, driver assistance like adaptive cruise control lane keep assist where you feel like a ping pong ball bouncing back and forth between the lane markers. These newer ones are definitely a lot better. They actually feel like they are following the curvature of the road. And speaking of curves, we'll hit this little roundabout turn here. This is a ooh, this is a front wheel drive based platform with all wheel drive now. So um, have I felt the barest hint of torque steer sometimes? Maybe a little bit. Um, no, it's not a full out sporty model, but that's the that's the blend of the GT line. The whole point is you live in a maybe a more built up residential area and you want some of the sportiness, you want the versatility, the practicality, um, and that's what this K5 really does offer. So speaking of value, the K5 GT line starts at $25,490. The all wheel drive package is 3,700, but like I mentioned, you get a lot of stuff bundled with that. LED lights, the blacked out trim, you the panoramic sunroof, some of these nicer interior features and trim. So I think that's actually a pretty good deal because A, you get the um, extra capability of having an all wheel drive system, but all these other features are very nice to have. This one specifically is optioned to just over $31,000. That's a sticker price on this car. And it's just competitive in the price range of mid-sized sedans out there. 
Now, the best part of the value, I think, for the K5 that's unmatched in the entire industry is the warranty. A 10-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty with a 5-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper. So that is... That is unmatched. And when you speak about value, long-term ownership costs, maintenance, service, whatever's going on with it, having that long of a warranty really does provide you good peace of mind for the powertrain. 10 years, I mean, to get that long of warranty, I have it, I have something close to that. I think I have seven years on my Shelby 350R. I need to keep buying it on top of it. Yes, you can offer an extended, but Kia goes from the factory, you get a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. So what are some of the things that I didn't like about the K5? Uh, spending my week with the vehicle, um, the exhaust tips annoy me a lot. They're fake. They're completely fake. And as this is pitched as the more sporty appearance, yes, I understand they make the rear fascia to have an exhaust surround. But if you just look underneath, you see the actual real pipe just turns down right before it hits that rear bumper. I can't blame Kia too much for doing it. Like Audi did it in a lot of their vehicles. Look at the Audi SQ5 and you're like, what? But if you go to the actual Kia K5 GT, you get quad exhaust tips. And I, I hope those are real. I haven't seen one in person, so I'm not sure. Not a huge fan of that. One other thing with the styling, the there's that chrome trim piece that runs around kind of the top of the vehicle, tying um, the kind of swoopy roof line together but it's it's like chromed out whereas almost everything else i think on the car is blacked out even the mirror housings are are black so i think it looks kind of weird it stands out but regardless overall i think the k5 is one of the best looking sedans out there right now really aggressive looking i think the name might confuse some people alphanumeric can help denote hierarchy so if you've got um, the bigger number is a higher up vehicle a bigger engine more expensive but going from a it doesn't have as much personality as an actual physical name so the optima going to the k5 uh, when it's all new i think a lot of people having been used to optima and seeing those around and knowing kia having actual names going to an alphanumeric might be a little confusing so um, from that perspective again it's that's not that's not really much of an impact to what the car is like or how it is to drive um, given how it is to drive it's it's been comfortable uh, it's definitely more efficient than any vehicle i have in my garage so combined mpg average of 29 34 on the highway which is pretty good even without having any sort of hybridization and the weight and complexity of that the infotainment screen is, is pretty good i haven't used a ton of the actual factory setup um, but i like that there's actual physical climate control buttons and it has apple carplay and android auto sound system is pretty good you can upgrade to a bose 12 speaker sound system it's spacious front seat is great hopped in the rear seat actually a pretty good legroom headroom wasn't as good for somebody who's six foot three really decent sized trunk out back there i've got a lot of camera gear back there it's deep and uh, pretty spacious too which makes me just think why why don't manufacturers build more cars why don't people buy more cars everybody just wants a crossover now when in reality a car is better in so many different ways especially when driving and the way it handles because you have a lower center of gravity i'm happy kia did a good job with this new k5 um, it's definitely a competitive vehicle in the segment so that summarizes up my thoughts of the new k5 gt line after driving this for a week go check out the other behind the scenes more informal vlog tour of the interior in details um, we go over some things like the window sticker and show you more specific details on the interior this thing with all-wheel drive again it's been snowing it's not snowing now which is why i'm filming it right now but we're gonna get more snow tomorrow hide it out in the snow and traction was good and it got up and went um good smooth powertrain i was actually the first thing i noticed when i went and took it i was like oh wow this powertrain engine and transmission combination is is very good uh, very smooth and good power delivery and it never felt like it was underpowered and it's got some good sporty credentials i mean it definitely feels more nimble than what i'm used to driving because i daily drive a pickup truck but obviously i'm in and out of all sorts of different vehicles the last one was a trx which is not nimble at all but the gt line is a, uh, a sportier platform for sure look forward to hopefully trying out the gt at some point and we'll circle back to the fact that kia has done a lot to transform their brand this is a great regular vehicle for the mainstream i mean um if I were to shop again for my dad, he would just got him a, or my brother, he got him a Ford Fusion. This is better in many, many ways than that Ford Fusion that was purchased. With that, we'll conclude this video. Again, thanks so much to Kia for sponsoring this review of the all-new K5 GT line. Go check out the other video. I appreciate all the support. Thanks for watching.